Hello, my name is Irwan Harnoko from Indonesia. Thank you for the invitation from Associate Professor Doan Arslan and Professor Dr. Lewan Margin, Kutaya Dumlupinar University. In the field International Art and Design Symposium in Memory of Ahmed Yokupoglu. I taught at the university from 1998 until now. I have been teaching for 22 years. In 2016, I just had the opportunity to teach experimental typography at Tarumanagara University. Because during that time in Indonesia, experimental typography was deemed unnecessary in the practical world of work. In 2016, I taught for the first time at Tarumanagara University. I was given permission by Arif Adityawan, Vice Dean at the time, to teach experimental typography in the Visual Communication Design Department, Tarumanagara University. While teaching experimental typography for the first time, I was assisted by three of my friends in teaching the class, Edo Tirta Dharma, Agusti Aditya Tama, and Hendra Bhakti. This can be said about the history of visual communication design education in Indonesia, teaching experimental typography for the first time. But teaching experimental typography isn't easy, especially if they have just finished learning modern typography. Imagine, after they were taught a lot of typography rules, after that they learned to break all the rules. I teach experimental typography using a book from Rob Carter. These are the morphological factors that Rob Carter invented to create experimental typography. I am using Rob Carter book because it has a very clear module for creating experimental typography. The most difficult thing for students in studying the morphological factor made by Rob Carter is that there are too many factors. There are 110 morphological factors made by Rob Carter. This makes students dizzy to choose the mix and match. Besides, I had to find an effective way to teach experimental typography so that this lesson ran the specified number of weeks to complete this exercise. I ending up to reversing Rob Carter method. I am not asking students to start from scratch. But I asked my student to start working to see the final result made by Rob Carter's student. Starting from the work, Rob Carter's student, it began dismantled one by one. And this is the way. I will present the work of Fahri Farezi. He is one of my students, majoring in visual communication design from Pradita University. Step 1. I asked Fahri to do was select a student from Virginia Commonwealth University that he liked the most in the book. Student work on experimental typography book is Rob Carter's student. Incidentally, the work chosen by Fahri does not have the name of the designer. In this step, besides choosing the work that he likes, I asked Fahri to analyze this work through the morphology that Rob Carter has made in the book. Direction Typographic elements exert directional energy by virtue of their intrinsic shapes and the position they occupy on the page. Like this big S letter and the small type, rotated at other angles, it is charged with varying degrees of energy. Type moving in circular direction acquires a whimsical presence. Referred to as typographic support elements, root lines serve as visual punctuation. Deliberately placed root line can emphasize thought, separate unit of information for hierarchical clarity and contribute to type throbbing presence. Blurring Distorting type provocatively transport it into the visual realm. For letters and words that function normally as symbols for spoken sound are transported into expressive image. Letter form can exist as solid shapes or as outlines. Outline trace the contour aids of letter shapes and they appear in the most basic form as unbroken lines. 
Most typefaces are designed to include both upper and lower case letters. They are more informal than lower case letters, which appear more informal in posture. All letter form possess the property of weight, a factor determined by the thickness of letter strokes. Type with thick strokes appears robust and confident. Tonality refers to type that is a screen or a tint of black or a pure color, hue. It should not be confused with typographic color, the relative lightness or darkness of text, which is inherently linked to the stroke weight of letters. Step 2. After Fahri chose the work he liked in the book, I asked him to copy it exactly. Because for me, the exact step to imitate is to find out the student proficiency in mastering design software. So, if he succeeded in doing experimental typography, it would not be due to coincidence. But indeed, the students have good basic abilities. So, before he made experimental typography, he already knows modern typography with all the rules and he already has some proficiency in using design software. So, if the exact imitation step doesn't work, then I don't think this student is worthy of doing experimental typography. Step 3. I asked Fahri to change the color from black and white monochrome to full color. Try to be two or three or four colors, change the mood of the color. The step of changing the color is not a difficult thing for students. But trying to change the color with heart becomes a challenge in itself. Here, I ask students to use a color harmony book to change it. After determining the chosen color combination, we go to step 4. This step is to change the typeface and change the big letter that is the main concern. In this example, Fahri tries to change S to F Y and J. Step 5. Fahri was asked to change the composition of his design. Trying to change the size, change the layout, try to rotate it, and so on. Most students experience difficulties in doing this. Step 6. I asked Fahri to change some of the morphological factor and the layout was readjusted. This is the most difficult step compared to the previous step. Can be seen here, Fahri added distortion to the text type. He also added rhythm. A progressive rhythm occurs when element attributes and or or the intervals of space separating the element increase or decrease gradationally. Fragmented type may allude to disjointed conversation or chaos. In this experimental typography, images may appear as background or adjacent elements or maybe contained within letters and words. To elaborate upon type is to add or subtract from its complexity, or augment it with detail or ornamentation. Keeping letters or words from text emphasize the element by means of their conspicuous absence. Type moving in circular direction acquires a whimsical presence. This is typography's most common rhythmic quality. Irregular rhythm is characterized by elements, identical or contrasted, separated by unequal intervals of space. The next step is an addition from mine that is not in Rob Carter morphology, but in Rob Carter books, he allow adding other morphologies as needed. Of course, because the experimental typography book is chapter of breaking the rules and this is the final step this final step is full of surprises many unexpected things that could not have been imagined before many students were surprised and liked the results they are asked to combine the best three designs which they have changed the layout in step six using a layer blending mode to use a layer blending mode, you need to have a document with at least two layers present.
at the top of the layer palette, you'll see an option that says normal. Click the drop down menu to see all the available modes. Select one of the modes to see the result in your document window. And this is the final result. I remember a sentence from Paula Scher when discussing series play. She said, Series design series play is something else. For one thing, it often happens spontaneously, intuitively, accidentally, or incidentally. It can be achieved out of innocence, or arrogance, or out of selfishness, sometimes out of carelessness, but mostly it's achieved through all those kind of crazy part of human behavior that don't really make any sense. If we go back to look at the works imitated by Fahri and see the final result made by Fahri very much different and not called plagiarism. What is originality? Undetected plagiarism. William Ralph Ing. My friend David Below review Fahri Fahri's work. David is a professor from Central Washington University. Again, I hope I get your names right. Fakhri Farizi. So the, the three pieces I want to talk about, the first one by Fakhri um, Farizi. Um, we can look at this type of work at different levels. I, mean, I can talk about it uh, on a, a formal level. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to also like to try to think of it rhetorically. That is, are there any um, underlying messages that are being communicated to here or being communicated here? Um, and then just what impression I have, like Weingart had with his students, you know, what type of um, impression do I, what kind of response am I having when I look at this? How do I experience it? <clears throat> um, and I hope that makes sense. So, I mean, if we think about this on a formal level, this is a, um, this design has a lot of energy, um, has a lot of depth, and oftentimes human beings respond to um, things like rhythm and repetition you know these principles that we have of design those all came from you know this western european call it scandinavian design model you know the contrast and dominance and focal point and all that well um if we carry that forward to today we can almost add some principles to that like the idea of you know what's how do we reach people today that might go beyond that things like layering um juxtaposition um recontextualization um, those sorts of things. So that's what we see happening when, when students or when designers experiment with type in these ways. Um, it has a lot of motion, has a lot of depth. And I think that's what makes this piece particularly compelling. You know, the, the color is integrated nicely, almost in this triangulated pattern. The yellow kind of is used to carry us through here and create rhythm. The same way with this magenta. Um, I think it's um, utilized in a way that it's just got nice dynamics and nice repetition with variety. So that gives it this, this kind of, I don't, I don't know, pulsating kind of sensibility um, of rhythm. And the space in this design is just vast. It's incredibly um, the illusory depth, think of it like that, where, you know, it's a two-dimensional space, but it just goes back forever. So some things appear really close to us. Some things appear very far away. and, and and it also um, the tone of this message, I think, modulates really interestingly. It you know it's loud and it's soft. You know it's it's quiet and it's not, and it's disturbing and it's peaceful. So these I think these juxtapositions of different things that are happening make this really nice. There's a nice combination of texture that happens typographically and visually. Um, so when we get experimental with type. It's, it's fun to think of, I mean, it's important to think of type as a texture first. So the small print squinterized creates a certain texture back here um, and it mimics the texture of this small print here or parallels the texture that's happening in this halftone kind of dot pattern here within this image. So I think that's a smart parallel, the kind of the bits and pieces that are involved. And then we get a little bit of that kind of um, distressed um, breakup almost uh, form in these pieces that are happening up here on the top part and how they kind of move down through the design and happen again in the yellow. So this idea of combining patterns to create texture, really nice. The, the, the linear quality to this, I think is also really smart to the use of line and direction. 
um, and it's happening on a variety of levels, which makes it more sophisticated. So the directional elements are obvious, right? But they're playing off or they're keying off the, the forms of the letter. So the form of this letter is kind of leading us up, um, same way with the P, and then the diagonals are real strong on the T and on the shape up here. Um, and then line is used in a less kind of um, bold way with the dashed lines in the background that are, again, reflecting those, those um, angles that are so important here. And the text is kind of riding along these angles and the student left some interesting spaces. Like the space here to the left of this text is the same width as the width of this pink of this T. So that, that kind of spatial comparison the parallel that we get is just, again, I think a smart choice in the composition. Um, the, the, it's balanced real nicely and asymmetrically also. It's the way this uh, kind of dynamic tension happens from the asymmetry, I think, is also really smart. And the attention to detail with the negative space and the student let the negative space travel throughout the composition. It kind of comes in and out of the letter forms and in and out of the textures in the background. Um, the lines aren't... This idea of the broken line, um, again, is repeated. So this repetition of ideas, what makes the, um, this just more and more compelling. Sometimes the line is clean, then the line is broken in the dash line, then the line is broken within the color here in this strip, and it's broken with the texture happening on that diagonal. Um, so just a lot of smart choices made here. I can't read it, I don't really care. I mean, here, experimental typography in this sense, is used as illustration. So I would be thinking about this if I was hiring the student to do this work. I want you to read the project or listen to the music or, or understand the client, what they need, and then interpret it typographically. So I'm kind of assuming this interpretation of whatever the content was um, is appropriate. I don't know what it is. So I mean, it, I would be able to say more if I could relate to um, where you pulled this. I know that you guys taught this class out of the Rob Carter book. And there's that assignment in there. If I remember right, it's called Type S. I taught that assignment too a long time ago. And it really is just this arbitrary combination of forms. Um, and that's okay. But I think as a student, if you're moving forward with this and you want to do more of it, before you even start, you need to understand the, the content of the, of the information. What is the message? What is trying to be communicated? What is the tone of the message? What's the emotion within the message? Then you as a designer, if you get this opportunity to be this experimental, try to express it typographically, okay? So I think Fockery did a beautiful job with this.